Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This lecture is lecture number 12. And the title of this lecture is The Three Brains, The New Biology. My host for this lecture is Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you doing, Jim? Fine, thank you, Rick. Thank you very much for inviting me to be here. It's a real honor, really, to be able to communicate with the entire humanity. You know, maybe it sounds uh, selfish to say that, but this is sincerely our main objective. Can I just say a couple of things? Of course, yes. Um, up until this point, this is lecture number 12 in a continuing series of, of Gnostic lectures uh, created by Samuel and Ver. The title of this lecture is The Three Brains. In the previous uh, lecture, number 11, we talked about the three minds. And I think this time you're going to give us a little clarification as to what the differences are. So we'll let you begin. Yes, thank you, Rick. Yeah, essentially, you know, we've been already sending messages to the world regarding Gnostic anthropology, Gnosticism. So, as you said, we have done already 11 lectures before, an introduction to Gnosis, if you remember, if you had any chance to listen to it. We spoke about the Gnostic Gospels, you know, the connection with Gnostic anthropology. We described the importance of science, philosophy, art, and mysticism as the four columns of knowledge, because Gnosis means knowledge, knowing. Then we developed the concept of evolution, involution, revolution. We criticized heavily Mr. Darwin in that specific lecture. We did agree with Mr. Pasteur, who was the strongest critic of Darwin. We, we can say we do agree with Darwin 50%, but because he's incomplete in his perception of reality, we also disagree 50% with all respect. After that, we went into karma dharma, the law of cause and effect. There are many cosmic laws, laws in the universe that for many reasons our scientific community hasn't paid much attention. Because in reality there is a connection between science and mysticism and religion. Some people say, oh, this is ethics. This has nothing to do with science wrong, you know, we disagree strongly about that perception of reality because there is a balance in the universe, there is an equilibrium, and that equilibrium is not only physical, it's also ethic, okay? When we develop negative thoughts, negative emotions, we destroy Mother Nature, and this is happening to us right now. We, we are making our planet Earth sick with our own negativity, our own wrongdoings. And of course, this is connected with cosmic laws. Then we spoke also about the Aquarian Age, the new age when our solar system entered within the Aquarian constellation, within our galaxy. Then we introduce ourselves into the history of the world and history of the human race, a very tough description that also disagrees with the perceptions of our scientific community, our anthropologists and archaeologists, because we disagree again with Mr. Darwin and his followers regarding that we descend from the cave people, the man of Cro-Magnon, the man of Nardental. They are just a species that disappeared, so we don't descend from them. There were two species in extinction. And we explain that, you know, in those two lectures about evolution, involution, revolution, and history of the world and history of the human race. Then after that, we enter into a psychological, the new psychology, Gnostic psychology, essence, ego, and personality. It's good. We recommend to those who haven't listened to that, this is lecture number eight, essence, ego, and personality. There we can see that the hidden enemy the secret enemy of the entire human race is not people. So the real strongest enemy is our own psychological behavior, our wrong psychological conduct. So the ego is our 
animal inferior psychology? Shouldn't we learn to develop a more human psychology? Then we spoke about the seven, the parallel universes, parallel dimensions of space, and the seven bodies, because we do have more than one body. We explained that in lecture number nine. Number 10, that was a very, very philosophical approach into reality and the connection with the arts. We spoke about Shakespeare when in that amazing, incredible play called Hamlet, we described when Hamlet was talking to himself, watching a skull on his right hand, saying, to be or to be not. And we explain the real meaning of it, because Shakespeare, according to our studies, was a Gnostic. He was a Gnostic artist that really made tremendous psychological revolution am among his, uh, his followers and people who've been studying him through the centuries. So we explain that to be or to be not means to be or to exist, the big differences. Then number 11, as you said, Rick, we spoke about the three minds. We explained the difference between mind and brain. It's not the same. We described that we have 10,000 little minds that fight with each other. They don't agree with each other. So that creates a lot of conflict in our psychological universe. So we synthesized those 10,000 little minds into three major minds. So today, we are going to be talking about the three brains. The three brains. Don't confuse them with the three minds. The three brains and the new biology. A new biology that the entire human race will have to rediscover because it's been told in the past. The founders of medicine, Western medicine, they were Greek people, they were European people, and they knew about this. And this is very much connected with Chinese medicine, ancient Chinese medicine, ancient Hindu medicine, and also the Mayan medicine that many people continue practicing in Central America, different than the medicine that we practice in the Western world. But the medicine of the Western world came from Greece. And the Greeks were connected with the Mayans and they were connecting with the ancient Chinese. So the three brains are a representation of a new approach into what we have within our own organisms. You see, we have three brains. We don't have only one brain. You know, the first brain is connected with the process of thinking. The second brain is connected with the process of movement, motor. And the third brain is the emotional center. So to describe them according to, I would say, a more known approach, according to scientific community, we could say the first brain is enclosed within the cranial vault, within our head. The second brain correspond to the central medulla, the dorsal spine, with all its nervous branches. And the third brain is connected by the sympathetic nervous plexus and all the specific nervous centers of the physical organism. So we are going to, to be able to understand them better. You know, we have to go deeper and deeper into understanding also other approaches into a new biology. This new biology explains that we do have magnetic centers within the human machine. Those magnetic centers, we should describe them as seven magnetic centers that are interrelated with the three brains. These three brains are not developed. We could say they are the blueprint that Mother Nature gave us. And this bl blueprint means that we have to learn to develop them, to complete what M Mother Nature gave us. But as we said in past lectures, our real ancestors, they were people with a complete, developed, incredible human machine. They were supermen, superwomen compared with us today. 
they were angelical humanities that had nothing to do with the man of Cromagnon, the man of Nardental. You know, these people were halfway between animals and people. And the trouble is that we descended from that level of perfection that Mother Nature gave to the original human races. We descended, we entered into a stage of degeneration, and this is what the Bible calls the fall of Adam and Eve, the Adams and the Eves, because there were many, there were not only two people. So the seven magnetic centers, or cylinder, because they have a form of a cylinder, the way the energies move within our organism is the same way the universe also moves in spirals. So we do have an intellectual center and we can divide it into the superior intellect and the inferior intellect. And this is connected with the first brain. We have an emotional center or emotional magnetic center or magnetic cylinder. That emotional is divided also in, in a superior emotional and an inferior emotional. And we have a motor magnetic center, which is connected with, as we said, the brain one of the three brains, because it's connected with the spine, and we have an instinctive, an instinctive magnetic center, and that instinctive center is also in our spine. We could say the motor is on the upper part of the spine when we have our neck. You know, if we have an accident and we can hit that part of our body, we'll, we can become paralyzed for a lifetime. That has happened to many people and they end in a wheelchair, and they will die also younger. The instinctive antenna, the instinctive magnetic center, is on the lowest part of the spine. So it is connected with that brain, the motor brain. Animals have the instinct very much developed. We also have that antenna or cylinder or magnetic center, but the trouble is if we don't practice sports, we never develop it. If we don't learn to dance, we never develop it. People who practice martial arts, they have it very much developed. They can react faster than thinking. You can save your life if you know how to use your instinctive antennas or cylinder or magnetic center. And finally, number seven, we have a sexual magnetic center located in our genitals. Now, there is a strong connection with our genitals and the spine, the instinctive and the motor. So they are connected with the motor brain, the sexual activities, instinctive activities, and motor activities are connected with that brain, one of the three brains. The superior emotional and the inferior emotional, they are allocated, you know, in our pancreas, the inferior emotional, the superior emotional, our heart. And that's very important because it's connected with one of the three brains, the emotional brain. And the intellect, the intellectual brain that we all know very well, is also divided into a superior intellect and an inferior. The superior is the pineal gland, the pituitary gland. The superior, we said that before, the superior intellect uh, based on the pineal gland is the capability to be, become inspired. The crown of the brain, inspiration is coming from there. Creative willpower is coming from there. And the other one is the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland is connected with creative imagination, which are higher than thinking. Now, the inferior intellect is just thinking. We said that in our last lecture, number 11, so we establish the difference between the mind and the brain. You know, there is a connection, but there is also a tremendous difference. Now, if you have studied yoga, the seven chakras of yoga are very much connected with the seven centers, magnetic centers of the human machine. And it's important for those who study yoga, how to develop their chakras. Well, we recommend people to do that. And of course, we recommend Kundalini Yoga or Tantra Yoga because there is a strong lesson to be learned through those studies. And we are going to be talking about that in the future. 
Now, if you are a Bible student, if you read the final book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, there we will see the seven churches of the Apocalypse. I've been talking in the past, you know, with many, many people who are, according to them, they are experts in Biblic studies, you know, and they are totally convinced that, you know, the seven churches of the Apocalypse have nothing to do with us. They are in different countries, in the Middle East. But in reality, you know, with all respect, we are going to clarify a situation that seven churches of the Apocalypse are within our own organism. You see, they are within our temple because we are temples of the divinity. We are also a laboratory because we have all elements of nature are inside and all kind of medicine to heal ourselves is also within ourselves. We said that before we are a replica of the galaxy. The microcosmos, man, woman, is connected with the macrocosmos of the universe, our galaxy, our solar system, our constellations. Every atomic particle is connected with planets, solar systems, and constellations within our own galaxy. So we are a replica of the universe. Now, what about the seven endocrine glands? This is extremely important because in a, in a lecture in the future, we are going to be talking about the seven endocrine glands and the relationship with awakening our superior senses. Did you know that it is normal to have 12 senses instead of five senses? Why do we only speak about five senses? Because the other seven are atrophied. They have never developed. But we carry within ourselves the potential to awaken them. And the main conflict is coming from the scientific world, the scientific community, who, for many reasons, because they are skeptical, and also, as we said in our past lecture, number 11, they, they've been called the Sadducees by Jesus Christ, because many of them are materialistic scientists who don't accept the reality of the divinity. And of course, they only trust their five senses when our five senses cannot perceive reality the way it is. And this is a main trouble coming from the scientific community. Scientists who are atheists, who are convinced that there is no divinity, and they can never prove it because they only believe that there is no divinity. They don't know. They, and the other trouble is the, the other kind of people who are fanatic religious individuals, who also believe in God, but they never knew, they never experienced God's presence for real within themselves. They never establish a relationship with God, because instead of learning to believe, we should learn to know reality. And God, our real being, is the most important element of reality. The reality of all realities. The inner reality of all realities is our spiritual being, our immortal spiritual being, our real being. So these two kind of individuals, the fanatic religious and also the atheist, people who only believe in what their five senses teach them, the scientific community today, there are of course new generations who are more advanced in different ways, because they accept that there is more than one, there is more than one three dimensions. You know, Albert Einstein discovered the fourth dimension, and he created also the perception that there are more dimensions than the fourth. There is a fifth, a sixth, and a seven, or even more dimensions within space and time. Our scientific com community, the time has come for them to stop being three dimensional because this is absolutely wrong. This is an incomplete perception of reality. And of course, when we study endocrinology within medicine, within biology, we should know that the seven endocrine glands are connected with our seven superior senses. Now, somebody could say, well, what is this, you know? Well, we mentioned it a little bit before. The seven endocrine glands are 
in our brain, in one of our three brains, we have then the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. The pineal gland is connected with the capability to be awakened of inspiration. Normally, artistic individuals, they are the ones who have developed more and more that capability, learning to be inspired. But you know, Albert Einstein, a scientist, he did the same thing. But Albert Einstein was at the same time, he was an artist. Did you know that? He played violin beautifully. He played classical music, Beethoven and Mozart, in his own violin. He was a very complete individual. He was a scientist, a mathematician. He opened up new doors into scientific research. The, his perception of, you know, time and space was very, very amazing that opened all kinds of doors to investigate and discover, you know, incredible secrets of the universe. Now, he was also, Albert Einstein was also a philosopher. And he was also a religious individual. He's the one who said, science without religion, lames. Religion without science is blind. What is that, you know? That's exactly what Gnostic anthropology is trying to give to the world. We accept Albert Einstein's perception of reality. We do agree with him very, very much. So, the seven endocrine glands again, connected with the three brains, the Intellectual brain divided in superior intellectual and inferior intellectual. Again, these two endocrine glands are connected with, you see, are connected with inspiration, creative imagination, and also creative willpower. They are superior senses. They are all superior senses. Thinking is not a superior sense. Thinking is part of the inferior intellectual. We explained that before. That thinking and thinking and thinking, you can be thinking for a million years and you will end going into circles because this is not the highest purpose of the intellect. It's not. You see, and this is why the world has been thinking and thinking since uh, Aristoteles, before Jesus Christ, for thousands of years. And look at the result. We're in a very poor stage of psychological growth, scientific growth, you know, we're very much behind our expectations. Now, the superior emotional and inferior emotional, they are connected they are co with the seven endocrine glands. But also there are other endocrine glands. In our neck, we have the thyroides, thyroid gland, thyroides. And the thyroides is connected with the inner ear, the ear of the musicians, the ear of the composers. People who can listen to the music before they write it down, before they can create a musical piece. Well, they feel the music, they listen to the music, because the universe is in constant movement, in constant motion, and according to Gnostic anthropology, there is music in the universe. That because we have an atrophied, atrophied ear, we cannot perceive that music, that Beethoven and Mozart were able to do it. But we cannot do it unless we learn how to awaken that chakra or endocrine gland or a church of the apocalypse connected with being able to listen to mysterious sounds that emerge from nature itself. Now, what about our heart? Many people believe that the heart is just a motor to pump blood, blood into the system. They say it's a muscle. Well, it is all of that, but it's also an, an endocrine gland. And the superior emotional magnetic center or cylinder is allocated in our heart, connected with a superior sense called intuition. What's intuition? It's in a perception of reality without thinking. It's knowledge without thinking. It's a higher superior sense that emotional people perceive reality faster. It's connected with emotional intelligence, connected with one of the three brains. Now, the inferior emotional is our pancreas, and the pancreas is connected with telepathy. Telepathy. You know, when we, when we feel the presence of someone that is not with us, Im immediately we imagine that person. 
and a few seconds later the phone will ring and people will say, hey, I, I was just thinking in you. You know, it's incredible. And, and you say, oh, amazing, you know, I was also feeling your presence here. Or you are walking on the street. You have that perception and you meet that person in the corner of that street and you also will exchange the same kind of dialogue. Come on, you know, what is this? I was just thinking in you. What happened is that through our pancreas, we experience a magnetic emotional connection with the other person, and then we receive that emotional, you know, emotions are molecular that travel also within time and space. We perceive that connection of the other person, and that will be sent faster through our multiple nervous branches into the brain and we will translate that into thoughts and words you see and we call it telepathy this is telepathy it's an emotional kind of intelligence emotional language and intuition is also a superior emotional perception of reality connected with the emotional brain now what about our thymus gland this is another gland connected with the seven endocrine gland the thymus gland is in our lungs, in our lungs. So, what is that? What's the purpose of, of it? Well, according to Gnostic anthropology, for those who accept the possibility of that we experience many lifetimes before, then Gnostic anthropology teaches us that this is the memory of past lives. So we have to awaken that capability, which is sleeping within ourselves. But for those who don't accept that we, we've been here before, well, what about genetic memory? You know, we carry within ourselves the genes of our ancestors, our father, our grandfather, our grand-grand-grandparents. So everything is recorded in our genes. Well, that's genetic memory then, if you don't accept that we lived here before. Gnostic anthropology also teaches that we come back within our own genes. We, in a few words, we were our own ancestors. Well, you don't have to accept that, but let's be also open to many, many new alternatives in our everyday life. And then, after that, our genitals. There is so much ignorance about sexuality, and some people call themselves sexologists, many psychiatrists. Psychologists, they, they describe themselves as experts in sexuality. The only trouble is that these are the people who recommend masturbation and we say they are wrong 100%. Because when children or teenagers are being motivated to masturbate, they will inhale from the air atoms that don't belong inside ourselves. And this atom will enter through the genitals and will go into the brain. And you will have a man who is only 40, 50, a man or a woman, 40 or 50, who is having serious troubles with their own brains because that those atomic particles of oxygen, air, those atomic particles of air, unfortunately, they destroy their brains and they will develop all kinds of illnesses connected with mental situations. So what about those who recommend Viagra, you know? They have no idea the kind of crimin, crime, the kind of crime they are committing against the human organism. You know, sexual activities should last until the last minute of our lives. So basically, Gnostic students, Gnostic people who practice Gnostic anthropology and the new biology and the three brains, they, they don't need Viagra and they don't need masturbation. We teach ourselves and we teach also humanity that sexuality is something sacred because this is the secret path to come into this world. We all came here because of sexuality. And of course, if, you know, we look at sexuality from a very egotistic perception, we are going to destroy our system. We are going to also to bring children into the world who are not wanted. We are going to create all kind of unhappiness everywhere in the world. So, in the future, we'll be talking about sexuality, a true sexuality, Gnostic anthropology perception of a true sexuality, because those who never learn about Kundalini Yoga, 
those who never learn Tantra Yoga, with all respect to those psychiatrists and psychologists who call themselves sexologists, to those anthropologists who call themselves you know, experts in sexuality, with all respect, if you never learn about Kundalini Yoga or Tantra Yoga, you know nothing about true sexuality. So the time has come to change, to learn, you know, to be able to have more and more respect for life and for ourselves, because we are really designed, life has a purpose. We are designed to grow, not only physically, but also psychologically, but also, you know, here we can say, we can see that there is a tremendous potential to be awakened. We have seven superior senses that most of people never develop in a lifetime. And many people are opposed. You know, those fanatic religious individuals who say it is evil to speak about superior senses, they don't even know what they are talking about. They, they have studied all kinds of religious books, but in reality, they have only memorized, you know, and repeating those concepts there without understanding that all sacred books are written in a codified language. For example, the Bible, you know, and the Jewish books, they are written in Kabbalistic language and also alchemist language. And of course, if we don't know alchemy and Kabbalah, we won't be able to understand clearly the real message given to humanity through those sacred books. Now, there is a very important element to be considered that we die young, we die very young. When we die, people die today of cancer of 40, 50 years of age. But they are all connected that the three brains are not functioning properly. There is no balance of the energies. When we pay too much attention to sexual sexuality, to the sexual antenna, the sensual, the sexual magnetic center. We could say this is one of the most important elements of the human organism, because that energy that concentrate there is not only the capability to give life to new people coming into the world to procreate life, it's also the energy that will reinforce the functions of the entire human organism and also will give life to these three brains. The three brains are, as we said, they are just a blueprint. They need to be developed. And when we don't use the three brains properly, of course, we create an imbalance and we die young. People who die when they are 70 or 80 or even 90, they are also dying young. According to Gnostic anthropology, there are people who live in Asia, in temples, monks, that live isolated from the rest of the world. And Samael Veor, who visited those locations, who met face to face with those monks, some of them are 200 years of age, and they look 40 or 50. What about if I tell you that some of them are 300 years of age, and others 400 years of age, and they keep in good shape, because they have learned to balance these three brains. So it's important then to remember that the first brain, the intellectual brain, is divided in thinking and also inspiration, willpower, and creative imagination. So the process of thinking is developed in everyone. But you know, this is, with all respect, this is the animal psychology. Thinking is animal psychology. It's an, an unconscious process, subconscious process. When you develop inspiration and imagination, you can avoid the painful process of thinking. Why is it painful? Because, as we said, we have 10,000 little minds connected with the ego, 10,000 different eyes, and at the end, if we want to synthesize the perception of our own mind, we have three minds that enter into conflict. As we said, the opposite minds the fanatic religious individuals who believe they know, but in reality, they don't even know that they don't know, according to Socrates. Or the scientific community, those who are atheists, who 
trust too much their five senses, who also believe that there is no reality for the divinity. Of course, they are in a constant stage of conflict because they, they don't trust religion, and the religious individuals don't trust science, and that's the main cause of the divorce between the scientific community and the religious community, because both are incomplete in their perception of reality, but they are selfish and arrogant regarding accepting that they are incomplete. So, this is one of the brains. The other brain, the motor, the motor, the motor wouldn't be able to function if our sexual energy is exhausted. You see, when you cannot even walk, you're 70, 80, or 90, you walk with a cane. Walking is painful. Maybe you have to be on a wheelchair. If there is no sexual energy, of course, you have exhausted that motor, instinctive, and sexual brain because they are all connected. What about the other brain, the emotional brain? When we have abused, we have abused our emotions, our superior emotions, which are connected with the heart, and our inferior emotion connected with the pancreas, telepathy, and intuition. People abuse their emotions sometimes, and of course, their inferior emotion, you know, and this is connected with the ego. And of course, we make our life shorter. We are designed to live, as we said, 400 years in our modern times. There are people who live 400 years, but these, those people don't go to the media and say, oh, look at me, you know, I'm 400 years. Take a note, you know, publish my picture in the newspaper. These people are very humble because they have eliminated their ego. They have no ego. They don't need to be applauded. They don't need to be recognized as such. You see, all these elements are very important to be considered. So some people who practice heavy sports, you know, or do physical kind of work, and they destroy their muscles, you know. They are 40 years old, of age, and they are already, you know, exhausted in their motor capabilities. It's because they didn't compensate by using the other two brains. We have to learn to use the three brains and also to develop them. But as we said in a more advanced lecture, we are going to explain that Kundalini Yoga, Tantra Yoga, connected with the seven chakras, the seven churches of the apocalypse, the seven endocrine glands, and the seven magnetic centers or cylinders of the human machine, they are part of a whole connected with the three brains. Number three is a cosmic law. We, we said that before, is the law of creation. And number seven is the law of organization. So Mother Nature gave us a human machine organized perfectly, according to number seven. And also three brains, because it's the law of creation. We were created that way. But our scientific community doesn't know much about it. They don't realize that we are an incomplete. We are an incomplete, you know, programmed kind of life. We are halfway between the animal kingdom and the real human being's kingdom. So the purpose of life is to learn to be true humans. Because we are convinced that we are humans. Are we? Are we not? The situation is we are not. You know, we have an animal psychology called ego. And also our human organism, our human machine is incomplete. To be able to complete it, we have to learn what is written in all sacred books. Yoga is coming from ancient Hindu religion. The seven churches of the apocalypse are coming from Christianity and also Judaism. This is all connected. All these religious books are really books of pure science, science of the spirit. But because we are divorced between the religious community and the scientific community, we don't see how can we help each other to advance into the future in a more clever way. You see, this is extremely important. Maybe this is sounding very confusing. We recommend that you listen to it, send us messages. And also, eventually, we are going to be recommending you 70 books written by Samael Anveor, the founder of Gnostic Anthropology. There you can find a more complete description of what we are saying. And we recommend that you write to us, communicate with us, 
and learn about what the Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic psychology, the new Gnostic biology is given to humanity. Thank you very much for downloading this podcast. This is lecture number 12, The Three Brains and the New Biology. My name is Richard Rucroft. My host today was Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. The website, of course, is rickyradio.com. And we also have some Gnostic podcasts on the other website, which is rustymicrophone.com. <laughs>